In this video, we're going to look at how to run Visual Studio Code inside the browser using a project called CodeServer. CodeServer is developed by Coder, and it's an open source fork of uh, Microsoft's Visual Studio Code that works in the browser. So uh, there's a couple ways to install CodeServer. Um, if you're on Linux, you can actually uh, install it standalone with some really easy commands. Um, but I'm on Windows, so I'm actually going to use their uh, Docker container to do so since they don't have um, kind of a pre-built installation for Windows. So I've actually pulled the latest uh, code server image from Docker Hub, and uh, I have some commands here to kind of set it up and get it running. So first of all, what I want to do is map some volumes in there. Um, so I'm going to be mapping in a local um, configuration folder, um, a config folder, and then my project folder. So those are all being set to uh, paths in my PS script root, which is the, the current location of this script. Now if you look at my file system, you'll see that I just have two empty files created, and I'm just going to then run this code server on port 8080. So it exposes 8080 by default. You could map that to another port if you want to. You'll notice that I'm adjusting my path here to be a Unix-style path. I have to kind of adjust the Windows path so that it maps uh, properly inside uh, the Docker command that I'm going to run. So when I run this, uh, you'll see that it's an output because I'm doing it interactive, and I have my code server up and running. If you look at my Docker containers, you'll see that uh, code server is now running. So what it's done is it's actually created some files. You'll see that we have some logs in here. Um, but what's more interesting is this config file. So when you first start up code server, it uh, is going to have win or password authentication, and uh, it auto generates this path or password right here. So we'll take that and we'll actually go to the browser and let's go to localhost 8080. And now we're at the login page for the code server. So I am going to enter that password and click submit. And what you'll see here is uh, a fully running instance of Visual Studio code in the browser. So you'll see things like uh, IntelliSense and syntax highlighting, that kind of thing. So you can see all the bash scripts and stuff like that have proper syntax highlighting. And it also supports things like extensions. So not only can you do things like open terminals and do everything you would kind of do in a regular Visual Studio instance, you can also do things like install extensions. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually install the PowerShell extension, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, first of all, you'll notice that PowerShell is not installed in here. Uh, so I just have this install uh, PSH uh, or PSSH script, and um, I'm just going to go to here, and we're actually going to run this inside here so that we can actually execute this install PS command, and that's actually going to download and install PowerShell into my container. So that's going out to the package repositories, unpacking PowerShell, and now you can see that I am running PowerShell inside uh, my container here. And now that I have PowerShell installed, what I'm actually going to go out and do is install the PowerShell extension. So if we search for PowerShell in here, you'll see that the PowerShell extension pops up just like in Visual Studio Code. Let's install that extension. Um, while that's installing, I'm actually going to show you something interesting is that one of the... Uh, things that you can't do with forked versions of Visual Studio Code is actually connect to the Microsoft Marketplace. Uh, it's against the terms of service. So uh, what's cropped up is the OpenVSX registry. So if you go to openvsx.org, you'll see that this is um, kind of a, uh, a non-Microsoft version of that Marketplace. So um, extension publishers can choose to publish on here as well as the uh, Microsoft Marketplace. And the um, the team uh, at OpenVSX has published, you know, popular mod or extensions. So in this case, they, they published uh, PowerShell up to the OpenVSX registry. So now if I go back to my um, coder instance, you'll see that PowerShell, the PowerShell extension has been installed. It's actually started the PowerShell extension um, right here. And if we actually go back to my PowerShell script, you'll see that now I have an IntelliSense. I can um, do things like execute this PowerShell script from within uh, the browser and that kind of thing. So uh, this is a really cool tool. If you're looking to actually host Visual Studio Code and access it uh, remotely, um, and it works in kind of any modern browser, there's additional options you can do to lock down or 
effectively unlock this by doing things like turning off authentication, adding certificates, that kind of thing. So there's a lot to kind of, uh, you can do with this, but it more or less provides the ability to uh, host Visual Studio Code in your browser um, with just a, a few simple commands.